Hello, my name is Lenore Reiser, and I'm a curator at the Rabidopsis Information Resource. Today, I'm going to present a brief introduction to our database and website. This is intended as a non-technical presentation and geared towards librarians who are interested in learning more about our resource. So today, I'm going to cover the following topics. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is a Rabidopsis, give you a brief introduction to TEAR, talk about what makes TEAR unique, who uses TEAR and how they use it. I'll talk a little bit about our community engagement and support, and then about the subscription benefits and process for subscribing. So first, a little background about the plant Arabidopsis saliana, which is the subject of our database. And here you can see a picture of the organism Arabidopsis. So it is the most frequently used plant for basic plant biology research. It's a very well studied organism. There are about 70,000 published research articles that have been out since 1965. It was the first plant genome to be sequenced. The sequence re was released in the year 2000. And in the same way that mouse biology can be used to understand human biology, Arabidopsis research can be used to understand the biology of other plants, including important crop species. So TEAR at www.arabidopsis.org stands for the Arabidopsis Information Resource. It was established in 1999 with funding from the National Science Foundation. It is the only continuously curated database for Arabidopsis thaliana, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. We're, our focus at TEAR is on the manual curation of gene function data from the literature. And in 2013, TEAR staff founded the nonprofit Phoenix Bioinformatics and established this community-based subscription funding model that would ensure that the data was able to persist and that we'd be able to continue to curate past the time that the NSF funding ended. So this is our team. We are a small um, a group that consists of um, some PhD level uh, scientific curators. We have a sales and marketing team. We have an amazing software engineering team and we are led by our director, Ava Huala, who was one of the first TEAR curators back in the, in the late 90s. So what is it about TEAR that makes us unique? What makes us special? So as I mentioned before, um, the key thing is the manual curation of gene function data that's done by a team of PhD level bio curators. We're adding new data to our website every week and we're considered by many to be the database of record for plant gene function and other resources heavily reuse TEAR data. We are also the repository, registry, or authority for Arabidopsis gene nomenclature. And the TEAR database includes some data sets that are not found in other resources. So the reason why we do this curation is to create what we call a gold standard annotated reference genome for this important model plant. Each year, our curation team processes many primary research articles. So each year we add a little over 3,000 um, research articles to the database. And when I say we add those articles, we're not adding the full text, we're adding citations and sometimes abstracts. Um, and then linking that information, linking those papers to objects in our database. So about 2,000 of those papers can be manually linked to um, genes that are described in those research articles. And about um, 400 or so of those papers each year, we're able to um, manually curate to extract data. So the types of functional information that we're capturing from the literature about Arabidopsis genes includes information about the biological roles or activities of these gene products. And we capture that and codify that in the form of something called gene ontology annotations, which are essentially um, uh, assertions or statements that are a way of making this information in non-standard formats in um, research articles into standardized computationally accessible formats. We also capture information about um, gene expression, so where and when genes are, genes are expressed. We capture information about genetic mutations and the effects of those mutations, which provide an, us an understanding of normal gene function. 
And we provide this very important and valued activity of capturing um, gene names and associating all of the different uh, gene symbols to their respected um, gene, gene products, as well as crafting um, curated summaries of gene function. So in a typical year, we add about 5,000 experimentally supported annotations. Um, close to 1,000 alleles and phenotypes are added or updated. Um, over 800 gene names and symbols are added and associated to genes in the database. And we um, uh, update upwards of 700 gene summaries. So as I mentioned before, the most up-to-date information in TEAR is to be found on our website. And this is what I mean by our continued curation. So the way that it works is this. We have very enthusiastic scientists who conduct great experiments and publish their experimental data in the literature. That literature is um, curated by um, our team of curators as well as by members of our community. And I can touch on that briefly. That curated data is then exported to TEAR, where the website and bulk tools are updated on a weekly basis. And then every quarter, we produce these what we call quarterly data dumps. And those data dumps are available immediately to subscribed users. After that data in the data dumps has been out for a year, that year old data is then made available to non-subscribed users. And these data products are what you um, generally see being consumed by other resources that reuse TEAR data. So either from the TEAR website or from these other secondary sources, that data is then used by researchers to um, generate new hypotheses and new experiments that are then curated um, back by TEAR. So TEAR is used by ten tens of thousands of researchers worldwide and we have a global user community. As you can see here, where uh, we have people all over the map, the biggest uh, users tend to be in the United States and China. And we have an international subscriber base that includes two entire countries, a number of um, uh, institutions, as well as consortia and some industry subscribers. And that worldwide user community is reflected in our subscriber base. So since transitioning to subscriptions, our funding is now distributed in a way that more reflects our user community. So how do these users, how does our community use, um, use TEAR to accelerate their research? So I'll give a couple of examples that researchers um, commonly um, uh, approach TEAR uh, using. So first, let's say you have a researcher who's working on a crop species such as maize, and they've identified a gene that's associated with a favorable trait. And they wanna understand what that gene might be doing in maize. So let's say I found a gene that increases seed yield in maize, and I wanna understand what is that gene doing potentially that results in that increased yield. So I might then take the, that gene sequence and use that to search in TEAR to find similar genes in Arabidopsis and to use the curated gene function data in TEAR to try and um, understand what that my gene in maize might be doing. Uh, another very common use for TEAR is that you want, to under, you want to understand a particular process and understand what genes are important for, let's say, conferring uh, resistance to a bacterial pathogen. And then how could I potentially use this information to engineer more resistant crops, such as a pathogen resistant um, uh, uh, grape plant? So in that case, you might want to search in TEAR to find experimentally determined defense genes and then use that sequence to find similar genes or homologs in GRAPE. So um, how do you go about searching for this kind of information in TEAR? So we have a number of different ways that researchers can search for information. We have um, a simple search that's available from the toolbar on any TEAR page or we have these um, what we call advanced search functions that enable researchers to drill down with more specificity. So here's an example of an advanced search page which allows for searching um, again by name but also by other parameters as well. So you could search for a gene using the name and that is that search box up here is great if you have a specific gene by name, but let's say that you wanna search for genes that have a particular phenotype such as resistance 
for a given function. In this case, we're using those codified um, annotations as a way of facilitating the search. So this is an example of a result to search for uh, genes that are involved in res defense response to bacteria. And because we've codified that function as part of our annotations, that information is now easily discoverable with a simple search. So once you've found um, a, a set of genes that match your search criteria, then um, you would search and you would uh, click on the link to the LOCUS page to find detailed information about that gene. And the goal of these LOCUS pages, and this is the most commonly used page in the Terra database, the goal is to make it easier for researchers to find the information that they're looking for about a gene. So we aggregate all of this information and make it available, and this saves researchers a lot of time. So there's a lot of information on a LOCUS page. You can see this uh, over here on the left, I have uh, a graphic that just shows like the whole length of this tear page. And just sort of going from the top, I'll illustrate some of the highlights. So starting at the top, we have things like those curated names and summaries that I mentioned. We also have a graphical image of the gene structure. And this actually links out to one of three genome browsers at tear. We have these curated functional annotations um, that, are, that are shown down below. Um, information about where genes are expressed is displayed using this nice graphic from the um, BAR electro electronic pictograph browser. So you can see where and when genes are expressed. Um, again, because we have, we know that researchers are interested in using information about Arabidopsis to understand gene function in other plant species, we have a whole section of information about related genes and other species. This includes a link out to a tool that we've been developing at Phoenix Bioinformatics called Phylogenes, which is a resource for being able to infer um, function from for unknown genes and other plant species. And if you click on that link, you're taken out to this um, to this new resource. There are uh, tools available to um, educate researchers on how to use that tool. So this phylogenes is a way for making it easier for people to use the information that we curate from Arabidopsis and other um, well-studied model species to understand and predict the functions for unknown genes. So as I mentioned before, scrolling further down this page, that we um, curate links between research articles and genes. And because we do this manually, our publication lists are generally much more accurate and specific than performing a PubMed or Google Scholar search. And this is actually one of the features in TEAR that researchers really, really value highly. They like being able to have this well-curated list of associated publications for a gene of interest. So in addition to this LOCUS page, TEAR provides a number of analytic tools, and I'm gonna highlight some of the more popular ones. So one of our most frequently used tools is this Go term enrichment is a way of finding out what is interesting about a set of genes. Um, there are, as I mentioned, three genome browsers and the genome browsers are a way of visualizing the genome in a graphical format and essentially being able to zoom in on, on the genome going all the way out from the level of the chromosome down to the nucleotide level. We also have some recently updated tools for comparing different plant genomes, including the Syntony browser. And then we have a very popular sequence similarity searching tool that uses the latest version of the sequence similarity software, as well as up-to-date data sets and tear. So because science is increasingly a big data problem and researchers are commonly looking at large sets of genes or whole genomes, we have tools that facilitate bulk access and analysis where they can search for and download whole genome data sets. So an example of this is if you go into the tools section of our menu bar and the bulk data retrieval, there are a number of different retrieval and analysis tools. And I'll give an example of one, the gene, gene descriptions tool. So this is a tool where you can upload a list of gene identifiers, what we call these AGI locus IDs, these unique addresses within the genome for a gene product. And you can upload a list of identifiers and then download that list of curated gene summaries. And this is a very, very popular tool in TEAR. 
Sometimes you have scientists who are doing bioinformatics um, and large uh, genome data sets. And so they want to import information about the whole genome, not just a set of genes. And so within that subscriber data releases that I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different data sets downloaded on a quarterly basis. And for example, this is the um, functional descriptions data set for the entire Arabidopsis genome. So we also, uh, again, because our goal is to make it easier for researchers to be able to find information easily, we also curate information about other databases and software and data sets that are relevant for plant biologists and try to make it easy for them to find that through our community resources portals. So in the portal section of our database, we have um, a number of different sort of subsections. And if you click on one of these links, you'll see this curated list of resources. So if you're interested in finding, for example, all different metabolomics resources for plant biology, you can just click on that section of the, of the website and then find a list of useful resources. So we support the community in a number of different ways. Um, we are available by email and usually respond within 24 hours if you email us at curator at arabidopsis.org. Um, we also provide help documentation on our website and we have a social media presence. So you can get updates and the latest news and sort of subscribe to our job postings using Twitter or Facebook. And then we post video tutorials and web webinars on our website. So to summarize the benefits to researchers of TEAR, TEAR is a time saver. We aggregate information at your fingertips means that you spend less time digging around looking for information. We are known as a quality resource of reliable data. We, are, um, we have analysis tools that use the most current data. And we're also available to help with data management and compliance for grants and publications. So we provide tools for researchers to be able to contribute their functional annotations. We provide um, ways for researchers to submit other data types as appropriate. And we are available to consult with researchers and advise them on data management planning and ways of making their data fair. And we also provide our help desk for technical and scientific questions. So for researchers, the benefits to, um, to being a subscribed researcher include, again, access to the most current data, always, unlimited access to database and analysis tools. We provide IP-based access with support for easy proxy. There is priority access to technical and curatorial support that includes requests for custom data sets. And we do provide IP-based usage statistics and reporting to, um, to librarians. So for those who are interested in, the, in subscribing on behalf of their institutions, please follow the following steps. Contact us at subscriptions at phoenixbioinformatics.org. Provide us with your IP addresses, which we will then use to calculate a price based upon your previous usage. There are four price tiers um, with a range from about $1,000 to about $8,000 per year. And that we do provide discounts if you're able to do multi-year subscriptions or if you are members of a consortia. All of our contracts are um, handled by email. So again, I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions about Terra, please contact us at curator at arabidopsis.org. And if you have questions about subscriptions, contact us at subscriptions at phoenixbioinformatics.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>